I just gotta make sure I'm far away enough so I don't kill myself. Alright, let's see if this works. <laughs> uh, I feel like it's, it's too far apart, whatever. Oh, wow, okay. That was really fast. Uh, oh my goodness. Alright, well. Time to check the damage done. Hey there fellow astroneers. It's a long story, but in my quest to blow up the solo, I stumbled upon something by mistake. And by mistake, I mean I blew myself up a lot of times. I tried everything in my quest to destroy the solo, digging via rover, digging via shuttle, and finally using a combination of hydrazine and dynamite. I made a decent production line to pump out large quantities of hydrazine using soil, and if you're interested in that, a link will be in the description below. The downside is that it still takes a lot of time to produce a huge enough quantity of hydrazine to pull up a small celestial body, and in my test to find the optimal layout of hydrazine, I discovered something. And here it is, another Ducky O'Brien guide on using explosives in Astroneer. Simply put, you don't need hydrazine anymore, you can just use gas. That's right, plain old hydrogen, or methane and sulfur as well. It's highly effective and very easy to produce, you just use atmospheric condensers. This guy will go over how to collect large quantities of gas and the most effective way to use it to blow up things. Collecting gas is pretty straightforward. The best way to collect large amounts of gas is to use an extra large platform C, connect three atmospheric condensers, and one large storage unit filled with medium storage silos. This method is optimized for speed. If you want to optimize for storage, you can simply just have one condenser and the rest of the slots filled with large storage units filled with medium storage silos. You can have multiples and the only concern is having enough power to have all the condensers running at the same time. A condenser uses 6 units of power per second. An RTG generates 4 units of power so that should help you figure out the amount of power generation you need. Here is a hot tip from Robert Lindsay, professional astroneer. A partially filled unit of gas has the same explosive radius as a full one. That means you can just simply remove a gas as it's being collected when it is only a fifth full. This will speed up your gas collection time by 5. It's more work, but if you need massive quantities of gas for exploding stuff, this should help you get it very quickly. Now we'll compare the explosion radius of the different methods. Here is dynamite by itself, here is dynamite with hydrazine, here is dynamite with hydrogen, here is dynamite with methane, and finally here is dynamite with sulfur. As you can see, all the gases create roughly the same size crater. The other gases won't explode, they're too noble for that kind of shenanigans. Next we'll compare the explosion radius using multiples of gas. Here is a medium tray of dynamite. Here is a medium silo of dynamite. Here is a medium tray of hydrazine. Here is a medium silo of hydrazine. Here is a medium tray of hydrogen. And here is a medium silo of hydrogen. As you can see, all the gases create roughly the same size crater yet again. Putting a bunch of hydrazine or gas together does create a much larger crater. Also gas or hydrazine is more effective than just using dynamite alone. Now we'll compare a single explosion with a medium tray and a medium silo. The medium tray gives the best gas to soil to soil ratio in my opinion. Creating a medium storage tray is also much faster and cheaper than creating medium storage silos for a large scale operation. You are also using 3 times the resources but not getting a crater 3 times as large. I'll leave it up to you to use whichever method you find best. Next I'll show the difference the placement of your gas makes when exploding. I'll use a cross pattern to show the different results in how you place your gas. Here is the result when the gas is close together. Here is the result when the gas is a medium distance apart. And here is the result when the gas is far apart. As you can see, having the gas close enough but not right next to each other gives you the most area destroyed. 
The optimal layout I came up with is to use a cross pattern with medium storage trays placed a medium distance apart. You can repeat this pattern to cover a large area. And with that I hope this guide gives you some ideas in your quest to destroy massive quantities of soil in this game. No soil, no problem is what I say. Thank you for watching and if you would like to see me make a video on anything at all or need help on anything else, please feel free to leave a comment below and I will do my best to respond in a timely manner. Thank you once again and until next time.